So let me introduce my guest for the morning. I have legal practitioner, member of parliament for South Dye in the studio, Roxon Nelson Dapramapo, who spoke to us yesterday from one of the bushes um, in his constituency as he was monitoring, you know, issues there. And um, we're grateful that we have him in the studio today. Um, good morning to you. Where were you yesterday when you were speaking to us? I, I was in Accra. I had arrived. Uh, True. Got right. business to do. Yes, All right. All right. Good morning right. to your viewers. You see, yeah. Huh? And my <laughs> constituents. Yes, <laughs> and I love some of the areas you mentioned in your constituency. Perfect, Pali, Tongo, Piki. In that order. <laughs> I love that. You write it down. You know, but because it just, it's, you know, you're because used to. It's, you visit there yes, regularly. Yeah, so you have to know your people. Yeah, yes. I know. You have to know your people. And one person who also knows his people, started good work and uh, won the primaries ultimately, is a, a young gentleman, very handsome, uh, not married, just in case you ladies want oh, to Reverend, know. Reverend, is that the uh, case? Oh, you're, you're, Reverend you're John, not in Team Fudge. Reverend, is that the case? You're not married, we'll, are you? We'll discuss that. <laughs> we'll discuss that. All right. All right. Good right. morning, so, Roland. Good morning. Yeah, and, and good to be here. Uh, so <laughs> I'm waiting for the invite. Oh, you're not updated yet. Oh, okay. okay. I will so let's forget you. that. Because I'm not updated, <laughs> uh, it, it means that uh, I'm, I'm late in coming. No, I'll I'm, update you. All right. All I right. Made so, any disclosures so, Reverend Johnny Tim Fodjo, please mention in order some of the communities uh, in your constituency. Oh, we have Yankumasi, I have Jakai, Yambibu, I have Bosumaje, I have. I think crew are my Charlie, Charlie, you are dope. You are dope. There you are dope. Them, you are dope. There are a lot of them. 120. If you give me two seconds, I'll mention all <laughs> of them. It's okay. It's okay. So you're on touch of issues. But uh, we know that a lot of things have been ongoing on the IGP and his men. I always keep saying that they're, on, they're always on top of this job or on top of their jobs when it comes to their men. And uh, we know there have been some tragic news especially involving a police chief inspector in a station at Kwabenya here in Accra, who was killed following gunmen invading that, that station and releasing some suspects who were in custody. And uh, tragic incidents already there. There have been some social media campaigns about um, a fund needed to be set, set, set up by the police service and um, the Minister of Interior or government for his five children and other people who will be personnel of the security services who will be losing their lives following the initial precedent set with um, the late Major Mahama. And so we'll talk on that. Uh, we'll also talk on Guta, that is warning the GIPC not to touch um, the law that protects local um, traders. And then we'll talk on Mahama giving the Gitmo to two uh, passports and uh, wives. So it's a headline of the tabloid. Uh, my, my best paper, newspaper in Ghana, Daily Guide. If you want catchy headlines, you always have to go to a Daily Guide, as always. So, but we've had um, formed a thread of Samira Baumia, who is the second lady of our republic, uh, saying that my husband and I are grateful to all Ghanaians and well wishes from across the world for your prayer, support, and best wishes. He's doing very well, and we thank Allah for his grace. He looks forward to returning to work soon. And we know this following uh, a release um, confirming all the speculation on the media. Well, the release really started it all from the presidency. That the vice president of our republic was not well, had been taken to the UK for further treatment and recuperating. So um, I start with you, Reverend. A good morning to you and <coughs> to our esteemed viewers. A good morning also to my good friend, Honorable Roxon Nelson Dafia Mepo. It's important to appreciate the, 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 the fact that the Lord, the good Lord, who is the ultimate healer, uh, has, been, has been healing our vice president and is in a very good state of health. Right at the outset, it was important that since the health of the, of the, of the, of the second gentleman and the presence, whether he's in the country or his absence in the country, has implication in, in, in our constitution, Article 60 has such implications, whether he in the absence of the vice president in the country or otherwise. And so it was important in that transparency, um, the, the public had to be duly informed that on a medical advice, he had to take a medical leave, he had to go on a medical leave in, in UK. And that was subsequently done. And there, were subsequent, uh, there was another communication and I find the consistency and uh, I find that it was apt, it was very respectful that you know, the public had to be kept aware what was happening and, and we thank God that his health is 
is rejuvenated and his strength is refreshed and we're looking forward to having him back very soon. On matters of health, uh, issues that I would always caution that as much as possible, people must refrain from doing politics with whichever divide one comes from. If it affects uh, party A or party B or party C, it is important that in such sensitive matters and such very private matters, it is sufficient respect is accorded in that regard and, and we dissociate politics from such discussions as much as possible. And observing, observing I have seen at the outset there were some politicizations, but at some point, at some point that was corrected and I, I find that quite commendable. So we, we keep wishing the Vice President um, the best of, of strength, the best of health. And usually some of these things happen, like I, I give an instance that happened. There was a time when my father was not as a, a private, you know, example though. He wasn't too well and then he had gone through some treatment in the village. But at some point, the doctor felt that he was okay. All he needed was to have some sufficient rest, uninterrupted rest. And so I had to arrange for him to come here. And because back home, you know, his grandchildren may be going to disturb him, his friends will be coming as concerned as they may be. There'll be, you know, it's a, a communal, you know, community. So everyone is concerned and that might interrupt the rest that he really needed. He came to Accra to spend some days and he didn't come for treatment, he didn't go for checks, he didn't go for any medical screening or physiotherapy. He just came to take some rest. And within a few days, no drugs, no medication, he was well. And, and, and he, he had rejuvenated, he was refreshed, and then he went back to continue. So we expect the vice president back happen. when? Um, I cannot uh, predict okay. one, but we are hoping very soon he would come back to continue the good work. But we also have recourse to believe that, you know, um, he's, he's a very hard-working man. And, 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 and it's good that he has taken this break to rest and then come back to continue the good, impeccable, selfless, dedicated service that he has been rendering for Madagana. Roxanne. Uh, I, can, I can only wish the Vice President well. Indeed, um, the entire NDC, the minority caucus, uh, we wish him well. Um, we may differ on matters of policy and, and, and governance, but when it is asked to help, we, we can only be each other's keeper. And his, his situation shocked all of us because we have always considered him to be in the best of health, particularly being the number two in the hierarchy of persons who control affairs of states. Is, is disposed to the best medical care available. And so his situation shocked us. Um, the problem, however, came from government. The manner of the communication. W what about it? Now, a communication was issued. If we have to recall? Yes. Mm -hmm. From the office of the president. Mm -hmm. Not from the office of the vice president. You thought that was untold? Yes. Oh. Things like this. I don't think the president ever took a medical leave and a communication was issued. You see, we, we are saying this to place the matters in contest. And then the same person came back to issue another communication. Then the chief of staff also issued a communication. So we are saying, why are you doing this? If it is not serious. I just heard my brother that he took a medical leave. We hope that is it. But whatever it is, we think the communicate we are not happy with government communication. In relation to this. And other matters. And we made it clear on the floor of parliament the last time. That government government communication, we are having problems with it. They should they should they should reorient and sanitize the way matters are communicated to the public. If, from the way my brother spoke, if that were the situation, there would be no need. They could have even told us that the vice president has taken two weeks or a one month break after the Christmas hectic, you know, uh, um, schedule. Everybody would have, would have been at peace. Okay, let me, let, me, let me ask you this. You know, sometimes as politicians, as media, let's say if we're communicating or monitoring communication, yes. 
do you think sometimes um, the way we communicate sometimes sends um, our sensory neurons? Um, yes, because we know? all panicked. <coughs> mm. We all panicked. The way the communication came, we all panicked. And from the from the way he spoke, it was it was most unnecessary for you to communicate the information like that, and subsequently out of nowhere, out of, nowhere, out of the blue, you know, and subsequently that he took a medical leave because of the way the, the information minister put it. Eh, 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 eh. You know, eh, something is not right. Mm. So we are having problems with government communication. That's my issue with this matter. But, but um, be it as it may, we want the vice president back in the best of health to come and contribute or, or, or function in the position that he, he took the oath to function in. And so those will be my preliminary comments on the matter. But I will place it in contest. When it happened to a sitting president in this country. You're talking about? Prof. Samuels. <coughs> of blessed, blessed memory. memory. The way they handled it. We are not handling it like that. Because we know it is not everything. It is not everything that should be put out for public consumption. Particularly when it has to do with the health of persons who are entrusted with public office. If it becomes necessary, we'll do so. In any case, there's, there's a doctor-patient confidentiality. And you're talking like this because you felt the minority at the time... They bastardized the government okay. at the right. time, you know, asking for and lots of... That's it why it's, it's, it's in good uh, you know. order that so uh, we, we, we the politics don't want has that. not been attached yes, to Yes, we this. don't want that mm. this time. I think the media too has been very... Yeah, apart I, from I, one I, or two other... Yes, yeah, because I we caution. I share the concerns, yeah. um, some of the concerns raised by my brother, Not Honorable Robson. Yeah, some of them I, I, I identify with them. Mm. Contrary to the view, the specific view that the communication was not apt and it may have raised some anxiety, it's rather contrary. From the uh, right at the outset, you recall there were certain fake statements that were making rounds in social media. Uh, can, can, you, can you clarify yeah, that? There were certain statements. What, what did you mean by fake statements? So, yeah, there were some statements that had been issued. There were some communications that was going on in social media that was completely misleading. And so that was creating anxiety. And it was important to settle the issue, to at least communicate what is happening so that people, the public will know that from the officialdom, this is the, the, Reverend the communication. Reverend Reverend that was the happening. first communication yeah. that came. It came from Ahi. Good. No, but and are you aware had, there were some fake communications Then we had a counter-communication that claims that that first communication was fake. Yeah. Is that not what you're saying? Yes. Okay. No. Yes. And subsequently... No, no. no. Then yes. we had that was the, the first had communication the, the, concerning, the staff. concerning his health situation. Mm -hmm. Then another emerged that he had been, he had been flown out. Yeah. Okay. You, then you, he said he never issued that. Then the chief of staff had to come in and issue one to confirm the fact that he'd been taken out. Yeah. Okay. And All then right. we had the information minister yes. also come to make to some... To explain... Good. He, he, his he was not in respect of the, the situation. Sure. But he said he, his statement was in respect of the reasons. Mm. So he said he'd been taken out as a result of family pressures, you know. And anyway. so me, I uh, want to drop this now, matter. Uh, okay, so let, let's just drop the matter. But Samira Baumia said, uh, my husband and I are grateful to all Ghanaians and well wishes from across uh, the world for your prayers, support, and, and best wishes. He's doing very well. And we thank Allah for his grace. He looks forward to returning to work soon. And all of us wish the vice president well in his um, recuperation, as it is. But uh, that straight away also will take us to... Um, the matters of security and we're talking three of them just in tow <coughs> and the first one has got to do um, with the Fulani Hetzman issue um, or him interior our correspondent who initially um, in his main documentary uh, brought this to the fore even though it had been the subject of um, subtle discussion on various political and socio-economic platforms um, also went back this time to Nsuta it's um, in the Ashanti region, and it's where we're told that apparently uh, two farmers died and seven cattle were also killed in the process as they tried um, to chase out supposedly nomadic, nomadic headsmen, and we'll bring you that story. Lifeless bodies of the two elderly men, riddled with bullets, lay about five kilometers apart 
from Jedwako town to the scene of the shooting is about 12 kilometers. Residents of the farming community say they have been under incessant attack amid destruction of crop farms by cattle. Checks at the police station in the Secretary Central District Capital in Suta, however, revealed no report on such damage to farm crops has been made. Angered by the growing number of herdsmen and their cattle fleeing Agogo, some residents armed themselves with machetes and other weapons to pursue them. They reportedly killed seven cattle in Rambo-style attack. The joy was, however, short-lived as the herdsmen stage a bloody reprisal, laid ambush and shot sporadically at residents. Nicodemus Boatin was on the search for eviction mission. I didn't see the direction the gun was fired from. We were many on the mission, 10 in each group. Suddenly, we heard gunshots and started running for life. All of us lay on the ground and crawled in the bush. We didn't know anyone had been hit. It was when we got home that we realized two of us had been killed. In Sutra District Police Commander DSP Charles Etria led an investigative team to retrieve the bodies from the bush. On the bodies, we have also found that there were gunshot wounds, which on the sport investigation we realized or we found some AK-47 shells indicating that the, uh, the, those people who died, died as a result of gunshot. He says the search for a vision group failed to seek police approval before embarking on the tragic mission. All the time we've been advising them not to embark on any attack against any of the nomadics because we know what they can do. DSP Atria fears further security breaches as transiting herdsmen and their cattle take refuge in the area. Even this particular instant, we don't know whether they have gone or not, because we don't know the, the direction that they have gone to. So in fact, uh, I'm still entertaining fears whether they will come back or whatever. Because according to uh, information that we've also gotten, most of their animals have been killed. Assemblyman for Jeduako, Abu Du Isa, condemns the first onslaught on the herdsmen which has left many of the residents in fear. And the general feeling is that my people are living in fear. They are afraid to go to their various farm. They can't go to farm. I, I, I have advised my people to desist from such, such things, but they don't listen to me. That's why. From Jeduako in the Central, Central District of the Ashanti region for Joy News, Ohim Interior. Reporting. And we know that the Central, the Central Central District is one of 27 districts in the Ashanti region. So um, we have to put this in context. Now, um, let me start with you. It's, it's, a, it's an issue that cuts across the, the country. It's, uh, first, let's deal with this incident. Two natives and, and their farmers. Now, ultimately, it means that we're recording more deaths from this. Uh, if you if you place the question like that, then I'm narrowing. Prejudice the debate. Okay. They are they are gonna look. Uh, I'll take the argument. I'll take the debate from before independence. We have known the Fulani to be nomadic. a nomadic tribe, mainly found in the Sahelian in the Sahelian and the high savanna zones of West Africa and Central Africa. Now, upon the attainment of independence, and because of desertification, incidents of desertification, and being nomadic people, they are moving down, down south in all the countries in the Sahelian zone. So right from the Futajalon in, high, in the high, highlands of Guinea, through Bobo Diolasso to Burkina, through Burkina to Mali, they are moving down south. So now you find them from Kohogo around from that stretch. So now high savannah, through Tamale, the farm plains. And they do that throughout the year. And um, 
Balime in Togo, all the way to Benin. Because that is where the seasons are such that even during Hamatan, they can find green grass to, to, for their grace, cattle to, to graze. Grace. Mm. The Fulanis are increasingly or are increasing in their population in Ghana. Now, they don't, those that are found in the middle belt of Ghana, they don't go, they don't do transhumans across the borders. They don't go out. You don't expect the Fulani who is around Akuse, who is, who is grazing his cattle in, in the shy, in the shy hill plains, in the crab plains, to move the cattle during dry season across the border in Boga or Paga. They don't do that. Okay. They have they are, they have married here. Now they are stationed. They, they they are they are they are stationed. They are ordinary residents in Ghana. And over time, they have married and given birth to children in this country. Who are Ghanaians? And now? by and by our constitutional dispensation, they are Ghanaians by birth. Yeah. <clears throat> so we must begin to see the Fulani not as aliens, but as a group of Ghanaians whose peculiar farming and animal husbandry activities are of this nature. So as a people, what sort of policies do we craft to regulate, as it were, or to guide the way people who, who go into open cattle ranching, and that's the way I'll call it, open cattle ranching, or nomadic cattle ranching within Ghana, how do they do it? Now, for instance, if you come to my district in South Dine, they are fine, they are, you can find them between um, Peve to Peve Ton. They are there too. They are there. You can find them between Todome and Akpato to the lake. They are there? Yes. And they are settled around Akpato to the lake. And when you visit them, look, these are people who are hardy, who are athletic, who stamina, even the best marathon racers in this world can't beat them. They walk briskly. They are hardy. They look, by the nature of what they do, they, they, they are even, they, they, sometimes they even spend like three, four days before they come back. And when they don't sleep, if somebody is in the bush with the animals, it is night. Where do they sleep? So, the matter is not as simplistic as we want to put it. We must take a holistic look at it and say that these are also Ghanaians and they will have a right to work. So please, the guidelines should be, we must ask the assemblies, like, like, like former President Kupo said a couple of weeks ago, let's acquire land banks. When the assemblies acquire the lands, they can develop them into grazelands and partition them for these farmers, the Fulanese, or cattle owners to acquire so that they can get the Fulanese to graze. When you graze on a portion for two months, you move to another lot so the lot can regenerate. So my appeal to government is to try and hold a seminar or a conference sort of at the regional level or a national level and, and, de and debate this matter so that a certain form of policy guideline can be issued. So those will be my comments. Reverend, then how, as you add your own to the debate, how, how then do we put into context um, all these um, uh, issues about Operation Cowleg and the tax force, etc.? Uh, then it is um, just a, a show up more, more sh short term in, in a way. Roland, frankly speaking, the challenge of nomadic headsmen, which has bedeviled Ghana for decades, all of us sitting here, we know the solutions. We know the problems, we know the causes, we know the effects, and we know the solutions. Which are? Which we have been discussing over the years, we've been discussing every day. You know, we all know the solution, but the question is, why have we not over the years, and I'm, I'm from the nationalistic perspective, why have we not been able to regulate that sector to make it more viable, to make it very peaceful, and to make it sustainable. Now, the, 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 the state of security has occasioned 
by the challenges that we see in nomadic herdsmen is, is one that is volatile. You see, uh, from, from the um, tribal point of view, I would, in one, one breath, Africa, some, particularly Sub Saharan Africa, I share the view of those who, the school of thought, that Africans were one, were one people, one tribe, one, one people, a nation. And, and you find pockets of, but because of colonizations, there's been that boundaries. So you go to Togo, I, I visited Ivory Coast, and I happened to meet a woman who has not been to Ghana before, speaking Fanti better than speaking Tree and Fanti. These are and having even local academy <laughs> names that are in my constituency. I so, experienced that in Liberia yes, too. I was surprised. But the Akans <laughs> are the most dominant tribe in West in, Africa. No, no, but in, in Ivory Coast. And, and the yeah. that is our forty six percent. Yeah. And you know and you wherever you go. wherever you go, you go to Burkina Faso. I visited Burkina Faso. And there are people you can even trace their cousins in, in elsewhere, in very prominent places in Ghana. If, I mean, anthropological studies will, will corroborate all these facts. I went so, to Benin, so, saw a face in Benin. So we are one. Yeah, me too, me too, me too. So essentially, <laughs> essentially, we are one people. So the tribal sentiments aside, let's deal with the issue beyond, beyond the tribal you know, um, um, factor mm. to this, which is also a very sensitive one, which also in a way sometimes exacerbates it. There are people who own some of these cattle. Beyond the you mean big the, the headsmen, there society. are people who own this. The, because really, the headsmen can afford the cattle. Yes, cattle. there are people who own these cattle. Could it be that these are people who are influential? Could it be that these are people who are who who, who are very influential stakeholders? Could it be that these are people who hold the keys to the solution to this problem? So, you see, elsewhere, Brazil and other places, even Botswana, they do cattle ranching on bigger scales. It's one of their biggest uh, um, export earnings. Export earnings. For Brazil, for example. For and, Botswana, and they yes. have so Country. regulated. You get it from Brazil and Argentina. I'm they have so regulated. And, and they are making inroads. They are do, Ghana can equally make inroads. You see, I see this as a challenge. And right at the outset, I had maintained that we took this fight. And, 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 and until we fight it head on, we are not going to. We are the people who hold the keys. It's, it's not just the state. The state has a role to play. There are multiplicity of stakeholders who also hold very important keys to the solution of this problem. But if they are not willingly given it, we must decisively and assertively confront the challenge head on. Now, we were not going to see all these inroads we've made in Galamsey fights if we were going to be negotiating. We would have still been negotiating. It's a very important, for the first time, and here again, let's commend the security agencies the Ghana Police Service, the Ghana, the Ghana Armed Forces, the Ministry of Interior, the, uh, the Ministry we, of Defense. In the interim, aren't we undertaking this the wrong way? Because it's now become confrontational. Yeah. The last time some shots were fired, Fulani headsmen were killed, and this time two farmers are dead. And four Roland, thousand Roland, cattle no, shot. No, Roland, Roland. Uh, the solution? The, there's, there's a one cattle, there's if a you comprehensive want to buy one cattle Roland, for a funeral or a wedding. Yeah, you know, there's a comprehensive, <laughs> there's a comprehensive solution, which lies in is an interministerial, you know, collaboration. Good. There are aspects of land tenure issues because they are grazing on lands. We need to regulate. Even how do we, how do we easily acquire lands? How do we easily acquire lands for such businesses? There's an aspect where the Ministry of Lands and Natural Resources will have to. Come in. If, um, we, we have Ministry of Food and Agriculture, uh, Defence and Interior National. We need an inter interministerial solution to this. And I know Cabinet has eminently taken this up, and and systematically a very comprehensive solution will be reached. But whilst doing so, whilst doing the very beginning must be that we must begin to let people know that this is unlawful, and 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 the sad aspect of even you know assaulting residents. Killing them, murdering them, and, 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 and even abusing them is, is most unfortunate. This is the way to start. But beyond that, we have to also discuss very comprehensive you know, approaches, which we all know, and effectuate it. And within, within, the, the, within, the short, within the next two, three years, we would see the inroads that we all together. And it's good that um, uh, Rocks and Dafia Mokpo, Member of Parliament, Dafia Mokpo, <laughs> Member of Parliament for South yeah, Dai, mentioned about uh, 
uh, uh, the comments from former President John Ejekumkufo. So we take that in and then we come back to Roxton and then we'll wrap up on, on this uh, discussion on the nomadic headsmen, the Fulani headsmen. Come by ranching. Ranching lands is creating or the marketing lands that are developed as farms uh, uh, right across the country. Uh, that we say herdsmen could be directed to uh, to camp their herds to sort of pasture at a fee. Uh, what we should be perhaps thinking about as policy is uh, encouraging the local governments across our country uh, to see if they could develop ranches that uh, could be leased to these farmers, uh, herdsmen, who could generate resources for the local councils or assemblies uh, to use in also providing services uh, for the how do we begin this at all, uh, Roxanne? Now, the, what comes to mind quickly is mm -hmm. that we must begin to first define the areas to acquire, then issue permits, ranching permits, or animal rearing permits mm -hmm. to these people on the street basis. Mm -hmm. So that, for instance, if you come to South Dine, the group of Fulanese or headsmen, who are found in South Dine are issued with permits. Mm -hmm. So you don't move your cattle across to say Afajato or North Dine. So you, you cannot move to say North Town in Joapon or um, Akuse. You'll be confined to South mm -hmm. Dine. So that another person found in North Town will have a different permit. He can't move beyond the, 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 the administrative jurisdictions of North Town. Mm -hmm. Do you understand me? So that when there's a problem, we know exactly which of these nomadic headsmen to look for. There will be a form of register. Yeah. Until we approach the matter in a methodical manner. We will not, because, look, now like where they were found in, 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 in Central District, they can easily move to a Jisoo area. Easily move to such as Afram Plains and cross the Afram and enter Afram Plains proper. <laughs> Which the situation, the way it is now, we must begin to frown upon. You must be confined to an area. About a year ago, no, two years ago during the campaign, I was on my way to Accra. When I got to Accra, these, these people were moving at about 3 a.m. with over 200 cattle. In Akrade, when you got to Akrade. Akrade, towards Kwon. Yeah, yeah, I know. <laughs> and I had to follow them all the way to Kwon, getting to Kwon. They, they veered up where the water, the Kwon water treatment plant In is. the night? In the night. You know, and, and a, a, a head of cattle of about 200. That don't. So every other vehicle, either coming to, from Accra or towards Accra, there was a traffic jam. Because they decided to use the highway, mm. you know. It means they are leaving North Town, which is Joapong. They actually crossed the bridge. Somebody told me that about 20 minutes before, he encountered them on the Adomi Bridge crossing. So, All the way? Yes. You know, so they move across district boundaries. They move across regional boundaries. And, of course, those closer to the international boundary, they move across... Uh, 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 the boundaries of international uh, lines. Okay, you know. so, I, so I have this comment from Godwin Fiavo, yeah. who uh, is a CEO for a company, um, Agricultural Service, G Fiavo Agricultural Services, uh, Basin. Why he says he, he he sides with you. Let's register them, train them in the interim how to handle and um, their, their cattle and the heads, and the issues can also never stop. He, and he agrees with you if we don't know the true owners. <laughs> And talk is to just for the training. Them. We can't train them in what they do. They are the best at heading the cattle. Okay. But we should regulate them as to the yeah. confined. They should be confined. Yeah. Uh, you know. Yeah. Ultimately, Quickly. Yeah. ultimately, the bus stops with the ownership because if there are any issues of pay, uh, payment sanctions, it applies not just to the headsmen, but also to the owners. Like I said, I mean, my brother, my brother has very fantastic and very tenable suggestions mm. to the solution. Mm. There are other parties who also have same. 
I'm, I'm, from the legislative point of view, I'm throwing a challenge to the Parliamentary Select Committee on Food and Agriculture, on Lands and Natural Resources, on Defence and Interior, to take this up. Let us effectuate it. Let us begin action. Let us begin to put something together that will be beyond the, the, the cow leg, Operation Cowlick fight, beyond that, we'll, and we'll actually shop. be able to, yeah, talk the rhetoric, we'll be able to, and for the first time, this is the first time when in we history register, we'll that we are having, this is the first time <laughs> that we are having this issue actually head on, assertively being tackled. This is the first time in our history. So beyond that, let us have all the necessary documentations, the legislative processes, and begin the, the, uh, the, the process As for of the tackling regulating. Being tackled, really. This is not no, the first time. Well, the the police. No, no, this the is police. not the first time. This, the, uh, this is a fight. No, no, a no. fight that see, we are, look, fight we are not, we are not looking at. We are, not looking, we are not looking at pockets of violence ensuing, and then the I police agree. going in, and then temporary withdrawing. This, uh, this is, must be a fight. Like Galam says, it's a fight. All and right. Comprehensively, uh, the, police, know, uh, the police, uh, there was a jailbreak in Kwabinya. Uh, a, a police inspector, a chief inspector was killed. Uh, now apparently five persons have already been rounded up who were told some of them broke jail and a number of the suspects. And you, you, you take a look at the incident just quickly on, on that subject. Yeah, it's uh, unfortunate, uh, but I, I can trace it to the, the increasing incidence of lawlessness in this country. What do you mean by that? What uh, do you mean by increasing incidence no, of lawlessness? Yes, because I that can kind give of comment. You, what, what does it mean? It, it means? it means a group of people, privately armed, decides to engage in acts of lawlessness. The police don't take action. Others are learning. What from type it. of incident? What, what do you mean by that? We, these are sporadic. It's. Uh, it is not sporadic. This was planned. This is a prison break. They planned and executed it. So it is not sporadic. But it is sporadic because these sort of planned, lawless activities are all over the place. They are happening in Greater Accra, happening in Ashanti, happening in the Northern region, happening in Upper East Upper West, happening in the Volta region. They are happening in the Western region. They are happening in the Central region. So that is the point I'm making. That, you see, but interestingly, mm -hmm. Once a policeman was involved and unfortunately lost his life, the police were able to apprehend the perpetrators within days. Persons attacked a court, took out a group of people. We are yet to get the people apprehended. Which incident are you? I refer to the attack on the circuit court in Kumasi. Okay. You understand my point? Now, when that happens, people are emboldened. People are becoming emboldened to do things like this. But I am happy they have been apprehended. And all the conspirators, people who, who help in planning such an attack, they should be apprehended, tried, and if they are found guilty, they should be committed to prison. To serve as deterrence. The deterrence... The deterrence aspect of the deterrence will be the actions by yes. the consistency of the actions yes. of the police and yes. not yes. being selected. No, they have to be Roland, consistent. Roland yes, and no side, no side logistic problems has been the reason why they are ineffective. For example, to apprehend those who went to the court. Yes. <laughs> Roland, my foremost, my condolences to the wife and children of Inspector Shilibi. He's, he's a hero and I so consider him. We, we would have to do something for the family to ensure... Just that. like we did for yeah, we, we have Major support, Mahama. Whether privately or publicly, we will have to support the families of... That was of, when of, they brought of, the view. Of, of, of Some the, of us argued that well, let me, should let me, be a let national me, fund. Yeah, let yes. me uh, quickly make, make this. He's a very brave man. Now, beyond that, I must also commend the Ghana Police Service for the swift... I mean, they've proven, they've proven right from the outset the, the, the opinion that strongly held that they are in charge and they are in control. And that's for the fact that they've been able to, they, notwithstanding, notwithstanding the, the very regrettable, the sad occurrence of policemen losing their lives, about four of them having lost their lives in the past, uh, in the past months, very, very sad and regrettable. Sometimes it, we, 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 we will have to be very factual, not, that, not to uh, um, take these cases very sad as they are, to generalize, to conclude that there is a surge in crime. The, the, the Ghana Police Service, led by the uh, chief, is, uh, led by the IGP, Mr. Asante Apietu, from 2017, January 2017 till date, has 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 steadily worked towards declining crime rates. Right from 2013, the figures are here. Um, between January and May 2013, criminal incidents stood at 478. 
within the same period in 2014, it increased by 2.3% to 489. Now again, it, the figure increased by 4.9% in me. 2015 you can't, Rola, to 513. You can't tell me that in 2017, now, crime now, rate has now, reduced. Now, the crime rate it, rose it, further. See, no, uh, Randy, this, in, this uh, are, Roland, are, in all respect, see, in all respect, I sat here and kept quiet, waiting no, for my no, turn no, to no, submit. No, no, if no, you no. have any disagreements, no, no, no. let's respect have, the viewers. I, have, I, can do, point, I can do more than no, no, you are doing, no, no, but I respect no, no, the viewers. No, no. Let us the continue the decent... Roland, is that, re, just regulate it. Let us have a decent conversation. If you disagree with the facts I'm putting out, and you have contrary facts, in all, in all fairness, in all from? fairness, why you come citing, with your facts. Why are you citing your facts? I do not appreciate this, and Roland, no, no, no. I, I expect you, you to. Why is that? Right. So, okay, Mr. Mr. Dafiamako, Mr. Dafiamako, just a source of. I can help you every second, but I respect the viewers. That is why. Just let him make his point. What stops you from just waiting if you have any contrary facts? What is the source of your document? What is the source of your figures? This is what was published by the Ghana Police Service. From where? And these are things that Joy News, Where Joy FM, have when? been putting it out when, every when day. Please go ahead. Please, please go ahead. Mr. Mr. Dafamako, please let him make his when? point. Now, I, 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 I think you're heckling him. It's not fair. No, no, I'm not. You heckling. Heckling. Rate, That's what you're doing, sir. I will well, not help the you. Public not know. because I do not disagree yeah, the with the things judge you say. Yeah. Now, the crime rate rose further in 2016 by 4.8% to 538. Now, in January, from, uh, within the same period, but between January and May 2017, there was a decline of 10%. To to the um, so, so it reduced from 538 yes? to 484. These are figures Joy News and all the media have been putting out sourced from the Ghana I have Police not Service. Seen any if you have Joy News, if you have any, I have not. You haven't. You I have haven't. Where are you, you putting from? Contrary, where are you putting from? No, no, I've given you the source. If you, you have any contrary the source, facts, so. where, where are you quoting no, from? Um, the point that I'm making. Where, where, where did you get your fact from, Roland? Where did you get your fact? Let me from the Ghana Police Service. From the Ghana where, where, where? Service. Which Ghana source? Yeah, are you quoting from a website? No, not from a website. So where okay, are you so quoting? where? The where? Ghana Police Service. And I'm, ah, I'm challenging you where that. I am Ghana challenging you. When did if you have any statement? contrary, if you have any... What? Can't you, you go to the... You can't you go to the police? Figures. That's the so, point I'm making. You are No, no, no. Just tell us where you are quoting them. It is most unfair. If you can't produce the statement, then you are concocting. Because, look, When I come to your studios and keep quiet, it's because of the respect I have for the show. No, no, no. Platform. No, I have to. No, because quiet. I agree with but what I will not allow you. My colleagues, I will debate. not allow you. But we to, owe to the audience a decent mislead. discussion. No, no, I agree. We owe the audience and a have, decent and discussion. We a decent if you have any contrary facts no, no, and no. figures, that is what I expect you to no, give. No, 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 no. And, and, well, have, no, and, and so the man that I know you to be, that is what I expect you. So, to my point, to my point, I will not interject you, even if I disagree with you. I would rather wait. Okay, go ahead. I'll give you my counter facts and figures. So, we have to keep supporting the Ghana Police Service. These are challenges that have come up, but they are not insurmountable. And the fact that the police officers have been able to swiftly move in to apprehend the culprit of, of this, uh, who perpetrated this criminal offense, we also appeal to them to attach similar agency to many other criminal acts that have also been committed, that are pending, and that is the appeal. But we must support the Ghana Police Service. We do agree. We expect a lot of efficiency from them. And we must also retool them to give them commensurate resources to be able to match up with efficiency. But even with the limited resources currently available to them, I appeal that they optimize same, optimize it, and keep steady. The I still maintain that 487 crime rate is still, is still a, high, a high occurrence, which must be further reduced. So let us give the Ghana Police Service the needed support to ensure that this and every other crime is dealt with and Ghana continues to become a safe haven. I, and, your, and your concern no. is that where they have to buy it and be consistent, they are not? Indeed. Indeed. And as I speak, I have two district police commands in South Dine, Bever and Peki. They have no single vehicle. There was an incident in Germany last week. Uh, I got a care, I have to be frank. They had no vehicle to be able to move in and help, you know. So I've just applied to the regional minister for vehicles to be supplied to these district commands. I agree, but the police themselves too are to be blamed. When this country, when, 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 when President Rawlings was leaving, they, they, they left a lot of logistics vehicles for the police. When President Kufo came, we saw the Peugeot vehicles they got for them small ones so that they can move to operational they, they'll move with speed 
to crime to sins of crime and all. Do you see those Pijo vehicles again 10 years down the line? When Prof. Samuels came, they augmented the fleet, I gave them Nizam pickups and Toyota pickups, Mahindra and all. Do you see those vehicles? John Mahama came, they added to it. President Akufuado has come. He's just supplied them with vehicles. So the, the, police, the police service themselves, they have a problem with maintenance. And they think that because their logistics are supplied by state, they use some of their vehicles for their private businesses. We know. You understand? So they must also learn the culture of maintenance. They shouldn't always say that because they are always receiving what they have already, they should not maintain. Otherwise, the state will keep supplying vehicles. The vehicles will be misapplied or misused, and it breaks down in no time. So once we are crying for the chicken, we, 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 must, we, also, we are warning the chicken. We must also warn, or we are warning the hawk away. We must also caution the chicken. Okay, I want to We are saying that they should be able to be up and doing in respect of any manner of crime. All right. Irrespective of who the victim is. Right. Right. I want to talk about Guta, but I can't. Let me go to Mah Mahama giving uh, Gitmo two passports. Uh, apparently, uh, this is just a headline from the Daily Guide, but um, let me start with you. It says that apparently the Gitmo two, beyond all the discussions we've had, the revelation by the foreign minister before the plenary or the house, uh, that because they had uh, received re refugee status, um, well, government cannot immediately do, do something about it, but it's exploring the avenues by which they could, if they have to leave the country. Apparently, within the period, we issued them with Ghanaian passports too, and this one is just uh, being reported by the Daily Guard newspaper. Um, but all these issues surrounding the Gitmo too and all that. Yeah, sometimes what I always caution, I mean, the credibility, and I always am clear on credibility of minority, which is very, very crucial in our democratic dispensation. And, and the question I interrogate is, was the minority not aware of all the happenings in 2016 in respect of the status of the status of the two persons under Jitmotu, were they not aware that they were granted refugee status? Were they not aware that the, the agreement signed between Ghana and U USA um, depicted that after two years, U.S. Is, is win of every obligation, but the obligation the honors lies on Ghana to continue their obligation. Were they, not, were they not aware? If they were abreast with all these facts, why would they turn around to even, you know, uh, um, assert issues of breach of agreements? The fact that the agreement was two years and uh, it has expired and they are still Who here. Who are they standing for, around? For it looks it more like, no, it looks it more like governments were, while the party no, was in opposition, rather they standing around. No, I'm, I'm making a point here. Please, please yeah. make your point. So the, the, so the minority were not aware that this was the agreement that their party or their government set out. Is it not more of the government And the refugee status that had been given, they were not aware. But a parliament is, is, a, is part of government. It's, a, legis, it's a, a legislative arm. So if they were abreast with, unless, of course, my good friend here will tell me that minority was not aware what the, their government did. But you see, this is... A national responsibility and would, would the ramifications of any contract agreement reached by the government government is a continue and we have to continue saying and and that is exactly what we are going to ensure that the ramifications will be contained and respected now with the with the with the with the, with the way that the agreement was crafted with its implications and with the subsequent granting of refugee status and the issuance of um, Ghanaian passports and, and, and the, it, it, it complicates the issue and so because by, by the international conventions you are not able to repatriate to repatriate a refugee unless at his consent except at his express consent you, you, are, not, you are unable to repatriate him and, 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 and I know plans that Got this government had in ensuring that they were going to you be know taking good care of uh, 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 relocation plans that uh, were fantastic that that would have been handled in a very effective manner in the both interest of of in the first in the interest of Ghana in the interest of our bilateral relations with USA and also in the welfare best welfare of the two Jitmo people but now that plan cannot hold because of the complexities and the complications that 
the Esfahan government put us in, which I was suspecting the minority to be abreast with before they ran those accusations. But okay. yeah. Let me give you only four minutes to tackle. No, this. it will not be sufficient. Why? And, and, and we are. We are <laughs> it's not a debate. We are shocked <laughs> about the debate of the government of the day now. Why? This was a government that was so opposed to every aspect of this agreement. And I'll go through. On the 5th of January 2016, <clears throat> this agreement was executed between the Ghana government and the government of the US. Now, as part of the agreement, these two persons were to be domiciled in Ghana. Domiciled in Ghana. And as part of the uh, note verbal, which is the name for the sort of agreement they had, the government within the two-year period, government of Ghana, was to take steps to integrate them into the Ghanaian society within two years. Now, upon the execution of this agreement, the, the Minister for Foreign Affairs at the time came to Parliament. In fact, she issued a statement and came to brief Parliament on the 16th of February. The records are all there. The, the government of the day now is saying they, they, were, they were not briefed. Ghanaians were not briefed. If Ghanaians were not briefed, why did somebody go to Well, court? Ghanaians briefed that this... Why this did somebody go... Why refugees? did the person hear about the it? Ghanaians, the Ghanaians... I think the argument briefed that, that we're not please, sufficiently are, briefed. No. Sufficient. Roland, were you aware? When a statement you are in the media, were you aware that... You are heckling now. Oh, you see, that's your point. When a statement <laughs> was issued, a statement was issued to tell the general public about the events unfolding as part of the agreement, and somebody decided that... He had to go to court for interpretation, so much so that Supreme Court eventually interpreted the sort of agreement as being an international yeah, one. You're struggling and to then, make your I'm point. not struggling. I'm making my point, and I'm giving you dates. <laughs> so they interpreted the agreement as an international one that required that required parliamentary ratification. Upon the pronouncement of the Supreme Court, a decision was taken by government to bring the note verbal to Parliament for us to ratify. That was the only thing they did when they came to power. They, you see, they don't read. They haven't realized that the agreement <laughs> is only for two they years. They say you don't read. They, don't read. they didn't so, realize so, that the agreement so, is only for so, two years. So, Roland, granted, I please, don't read. Please. You don't read. Please. Please. No, you. So I was been written that they, don't read. they, were, they, were, so, they had been granted so, refugee status. So, yes. Why not? It was so, if you knew, why, did, why it was in part of the process why were you, to integrate Why did you contradict? Well, nobody contradicted. You see, Why did it was part of the, the processes to integrate <laughs> the okay, into the society. No, 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 let me wind up. Let me, it is you critical. Are you are it is not critical. You are it is not critical. No, 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 You will not wrap up on this. This one is a national discussion. No, hold on. No, 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 no. Lawyer Dafiyama, please listen to me too. Lawyer Dafiyama, listen to me too. Now listen to me. It can be revoked. I do understand. Recession 15. I do understand. I do understand. I do understand. I do understand. They have the power to revoke it. So your position, your position is that. You go and grant refugee status. Your position, and expect us to your to, your to position is that government, the government, are government, by a flu government, of time. government, and they are in a kogma. Gov government, as a result of it, your, your so conduct your position in respect is that of this agreement government was not they, about board. You see, they've displayed your ineptitude in, in the matter. Your conduct in respect to this case was not about board. It is their incompetence and ineptitude in this matter. And that is are, why they are caught by the circumstances. Struggling. Agreement has expired, so now they don't know what to do. Whether to, you cannot renew an agreement that well, has expired. When you are not able do you to think, do you think, do you think that it is there. because you are getting pressure from the U.S. government to do that? We you don't know. know. Okay. No, what so why are you speculating? No, but if they were competent, so why are you speculating? If they were competent, they clear. would have acted before the fusion of time in January, earlier January this year. You, are, you were not even aware they were refugees. Well, so we had the end of the don't know. Giving. Reverend, uh, Reverend in Team Fodjo. They were granted refugees and were demanded. Member of Parliament for Asin Sao. And then also, Roxin Dapamapo. Roxin Nelson Dapamapo is a legal practitioner, but Member of Parliament for South dying. Why are you so worked up on if this? If you don't like the you're refugee so status on this. that we granted them, revoked Roxy, it. You're so worked up on this. Clear. No, no, because they, they are not telling the people. <laughs> Why are you so worked up on this? They are not telling the people.